Hello there YouTube, Darcy here. Just uh, wanted to make a little preamble. I'm doing some testing uh, with my Shirtwave Infrared FLIR Ajima 550 Thermal Vision Camera. And uh, you can see I've got it uh, kind of set up again with a 7 inch field monitor. Uh, these hookups here I had to order from FLIR as well as their uh, there, um, you might not be able to see that. The power supply uh, was uh, a little bit more of an expensive item, uh, but was one of the last uh, power supplies and cables uh, that were available for this camera. Um, you might be able to hear it. Uh, I've got my amps running right now, too, but uh, there's a cryogenic cooler in there that's uh, running away. And uh, I also had to replace that jack on the inside, took all the boards out of it, pulled it right apart. <laughs> I was a little nervous uh, while doing that. I also replaced the eyepiece, the ocular eyepiece, so that it uh, slides properly in there now. I'm still having a little bit of trouble with one of the ribbon connectors. Uh, I might be able to troubleshoot that, but uh, right now we're not able to see through the viewfinder, but we are able to watch through our uh, seven inch display. So it's uh, right now, can't we probably see it too well, but yeah, you can make it out a little bit. We're looking down at our torch, and that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna film our, uh, our HHO torch with the assistance of our cat Trip here. Uh, he likes to monitor things. And uh, what we want to do is uh, is try to show the differences between a uh, a pure HHO or pure hydrogen, pardon me, a pure hydrogen flame, as opposed to a HHO uh, hydroxy uh, torch flame. And uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see the full spectrum of uh, temperature uh, of the flame. This has a flame filter. This camera was actually made to. To uh, inspect furnaces, so uh, the shortwave infrared um, is uh, is ideal for uh, being able to utilize a filter that allows them to see through the flame, and then they can see how it's working. So I've added another amplifier on top there. I'm going to get a proper uh, rack, power rack here pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> but I've got uh, a couple shouts. Uh, to make out here to both uh, Reg at uh, hhoresearch.com.au and uh, he's who provides me with these uh, these uh, kits so the uh, hydrogen oxygen separator cell kits and he'll give you the end plates and everything you gotta you know learn a little bit about how the assembly works on them. There's uh, these uh, silk screen gaskets going between. That's uh, what allows you to be able to port the gases to one side or the other. So there's little notches and you can flip them back and forth so your hydrogen comes off the negative and your uh, oxygen will fly out on the positive. So I've got two 24 volt cells right there. And I've got my amplifiers powered up right now. Uh, I've got the cryogenic cooler running on the camera. And uh, I'm going to take a couple shots of, uh, of the torch running. I'm going to move this silk screen out of the torch flame <laughs> area. And uh, we'll take some, uh, some video. We'll see how it turns out. You know, it's, it's just something I wanted to try doing. I uh, also want to monitor some of the temperatures in the... Uh, in the um, electrolyte filtering system that I've got. I'll go over it real quick. Uh, my uh, hydrogen comes up through from down underneath there. Negative plates in the middle here. So all the hydrogen is ported along this side and, uh, and then uh, comes up through this first filter. Electrolyte drains back down into the main tank through yet another one and as you increase your amperage um, the electrolyte levels will flood up into these filters 
and then this third stage is yet one last opportunity for the electrolyte to get ran back down through into the back of the cell and that kind of balances out the whole system so that it uh, you know you, you don't get uh, uneven pressures building up and I found that this last big high tap coming back down through to the back side of the of the uh, is the the electrolyte floods in down there on the bottom and it exits out on the top up here. So I'm gonna have to reconfigure all this once again uh, when I build the new the new cell uh, and add it into the system because uh, already I'm finding that with the increased pressures as I get up over 25 amps on these these slip fit connectors start to uh, actually pop loose. So I have to uh, <laughs> I have to get into maybe some stainless steel fittings and some. Uh, quick connects and uh, things like that which are going to be very costly I don't know exactly uh, <clears throat> uh, you know what uh, system I'm going to use yet my oxygen comes out here I can vent it out into the room quite safely it, it disperses and you will be able to examine with clear camera as well uh, what the gases look like coming out of the system and how they disperse by their temperature uh, signature in the camera uh, footage so uh, that'll be kind of interesting. I haven't actually even done that yet, uh, myself yet. So, but when I when I want to run this torch, um, what, what ends up happening here is the uh, oh, I just put that on my cat. Sorry, trip. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, when I want to run the uh, the hydrogen, the hydrogen on the torch is set to this uh, regulator uh, control dial. Uh, so it's it's wide open right now um, and this is the oxygen I want to close that off and uh, and we'll just let the hydrogen flow out when I start it up and uh, what I do is the oxygen will be flowing through this valve wide open I close it off and then the oxygen will be fed into down through follow that follow close that's a breakaway connect so if there is any kind of a back uh, flash uh, as well as a HHO a special HHO uh, flashback arrestor um, so it comes down out here and you'll be able to see a difference between the ambient slow burning flame that the hydrogen produces and the uh, the high speed almost in a vacuum cutting type of flame that you'll see once the oxygen is introduced. It'll be quite uh, obvious, I'm certain. So uh, without any further delay, I'm going to make a quick break here, get everything fired up so uh, um, you know I can maybe set this camera up on a tripod and do a little bit of explanation once I've taken my uh, clear video footage. And uh, just a quick glance around real fast. I'm getting things set up with uh, a new experimental uh, line of experimentation that I'm into right now. I'm, I'm in the middle of winding some better pancake coils. Uh, I've ordered some copper ribbon cable that should be coming in fairly soon. And I'm going to be winding some uh, some some really nice pancake uh, Tesla pancake coils. So that's just a quick shot around the room anyway. And uh, oh yeah, one more shout out. Sorry for the delay here. Um, I hooked up a propane conversion kit and that's a low pressure regulator still got to find the uh, the appropriate uh, fitting for the in inlet there for the gas but uh, and I had to take my my um, air air filter right off and, uh, and I'm gonna have to put a modified air filter on there but then you can see back down in here that's where the where the uh, exhaust gases will be coming back down through the middle of that pipe. So the exhaust comes out the manifold there, out the wide two inch pipe, and then up and some of it can be tapped out through that valve back down through the middle in a geet like system there can be a uh, a reactor rod inside there I don't know what I'm going to be using just yet and then it comes back down through here 
and becomes available for being reintroduced into the carburetor is the idea so it's not quite hooked up yet and I don't uh, you know first I want to get it running normally on the hydrogen before I mess around with that so I'm going to be you know having some straight pipe action or I can add the muffler back on there but that extra length of, uh, of pipe might cause a little uh, more resistance than what it's uh, technically used to so yeah the uh, propane conversion kit that was uh, provided to me by Nash Fuel and uh, that's NashFuel.com conversion kit for your electric generators you had all kinds so uh, have a look at that website for uh, any anyone else looking at something like that well maybe we should wait and see how it works for me <laughs> but anyway okay so now we're gonna make that cut I was mentioning about five minutes ago and uh, we'll be back with some more footage okay guys so uh, right now we're running real nicely we've got our HHO flame running so both the green and the red green is oxygen and the red uh, hydrogen are being mixed in it's a pretty fast flame you might be able to hear it um, burns almost like in a vacuum it's just actually getting balanced out I switched it back over to HHO just now again so now you can see the water levels there's my uh, oxygen water level comes up over there and down to the torch <laughs> so the uh, the water level there really is why I have the taps to let some of the electrolyte out back there so I can keep the water level balanced. So what kind of a violent flame going on here? I could turn the um, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. We're running at about under 10 amps on the uh, cell number one. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit. Take it up to 12 on both. And this is at 20 about 28 volts should be close to that on both a little more on that one okay so now you can see that's a nice pure or not pure uh, HHO flame <coughs> pretty sharp pipe burning configuration and this is what it looks like on the camera. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna open up the uh, or close off the oxygen here. I gotta do this with one hand. You can see it change in characteristics. Oh gosh. Uh, hard to do that with one hand. <laughs> right away it depressurizes, but it'll come back. Just kind of uh, threw the balance out in the uh, the equilibrium in the uh, in the system just kind of got all screwed up there. There we go, now we're coming back and let's go have a look at uh, what it looks like here. So that's more indicative of what uh, pure hydrogen flame would look like. Burning ambiently, burning up into the uh, straight above it, you know. It doesn't have a very fine profile. Yeah. And that's uh, really about it. We're just doing some fun new testing with this camera. Actually, this is a new camera. And uh, Trip approves. He says, hey, that's fine. I think I do too.
So I'll be hooking up that new uh, new power amplifier, the one on top, into the system with the new cell. Uh, wherever I put that, right there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Maybe one one last time we'll we'll do the switch over. And we'll open it up here. Oh, actually, sorry. I want to close it off here first. There it goes. We'll open it up down here. Pretty different. So there is a bit of a difference. Uh, part of the reason why I'm making this video is uh, is in some of my previous videos, whether it be in my Suzuki or working with hydrogen in my my lab here, um, people have criticized me for not taking better safety precautions with the hydrogen, and. Um, a lot of times I don't think they're making the distinction between the two gases, HHO or, or pure hydrogen. They're, they're two very different beasts. You have to be well prepared and have uh, you know, um, certain safety preventative uh, arrest, you know, flashback arrestment, um, you know, preventative uh, uh, equipment and, and really using slip fittings is, is about the safest way you can go because at any point um, you know it, it can it can pull apart at any point without having any kind of uh, high pressurized uh, uh, explosion or implosion um, but if you're if your cells are working correctly and your gases are being separated correctly with the gaskets then you're not going to have any of the mixing of the gases and you can work with hydrogen really safely. It's when you start mixing the, uh, the oxygen together with the gas that it becomes dangerous. So using a torch tip regulator I think is really a good way to go. And uh, you know, and I should be venting my oxygen a little better here. I'm going to get, I'm, I'm setting up a hood uh, for in here. I want to be able to vent uh, vent this uh, whole system underneath the hood. Uh, maybe even put in fusible links for for uh, for safety preventative. Uh, and you know you got to keep a, a fire extinguisher around, and I do. So um, yeah, and that's about it. Uh, my smelting excursion here. I've been wanting to make some videos of smelting some silver. Um, the uh, crucible is a little bit too big for what I really should have, shouldn't have got such a big crucible. It takes a lot to heat it up. There's a water deionizer I just picked up as well. That's uh, so I don't have to keep buying these bottles of uh, deionized water. Uh, now I can filter my own and uh, it gives you parts per million on that as well. So I think that's a nice investment. Uh, you don't want any using distilled water I don't know I don't recommend it I think uh, I think really we should be steering clear of just distilled because uh, I think there can be a lot of uh, uh, mineral elements that can get still get through in the distillation process uh, that uh, at least in, in using distilled water I've, uh, I've experienced a, a higher occurrence of brown water uh, formation uh, so you know there's some reactant elements in the water some minerals that are, are not being taken out in, in distillation, perhaps. I may be wrong. If anyone's got an opinion on that, please uh, let me know. And, uh, yeah, so that's that. Signing out. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, love and light, as usual. Take care.